Okay, so welcome to this next iMesh video. So if you've been using Blender, you do an ArcVis and you add a bulb and a lamp, you are gonna have problems unless you do something to fix it. And I'm gonna show you the absolute worst possible case scenario, which is probably what everyone has done at some point before they realize, oh, I should probably do something different. And that will be basically an un unusable render, which will take hours to finish and basically be unusable. Um, there is a very simple fix to that, which will fix most of the problem. But there is a certain thing which I've been trying to solve for a long time, and I finally had time to sit down and actually try to fix the problem. I have talked to people on Blender Artists, and they've given many different solutions, but I do think that my one probably works best for what I want to do anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I've done and you can then use it if you want to. If anything, I think it's quite interesting to get an idea of how these things work so that you can maybe put that forward to your own work or tweak it slightly to, to your own workflow. But I think it's very interesting. I think everyone should, should try this. And the result, I think, was great. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so here we go. This is a very basic scene, and this is a scene which you'll probably have at some point in ArcVis. So you have some glass on a bulb, and you also have a filament. And this is a, a filament, and this is what will actually be illuminated. So in that filament, you might set an emission to be strength 1000, and then you set the glass to be just a glass shader, just something like this, uh, with transmission to one, and then you hit render. And then this is the absolute worst possible case scenario. So. Everyone has done this at some point if you've been doing ArcVis or you've tried to light a lamp at some point. Everyone has had this problem. And this will be the most unusable possible render you could possibly have. So I've set the max samples to be 40,000 and, and I don't actually know if that's gonna clean up before it actually hits 40,000. I don't think this is gonna be usable at all. So at that point you think, oh, what, do I, what could I possibly do to fix that? So when I said that your render will speed up by a thousand times, this is what I'm referring to. This is the absolute worst case scenario. The next, the next fix is a very simple fix, and this will, this is what most people will be using, and this is a very good solution, and that will drastically reduce the render time. But then I'm going to take it one step further after that. So the first thing you want to do is create this node setup here. So let's just remove this one here and plug that one into here, and I'll show you what this one does. So we have the glass just like before, and that is plugging into a mix shader. And then that's being also plugged in with a transparent into here. And then if it's a shadow ray or if it's a reflection ray um, and it's plugged into here. So to the camera, that will look like glass, but to the rest of the scene, it acts like an invisible material. It acts like it acts like it's not there. So this node setup is what you should be using for the glass. And on the actual filament, this also has glass as well, this piece here. And a lot of filaments do actually have that. So I've given them both the same materials. So now if I was to do a render preview, we should be able to see it clean up much faster. And now we can see that approaching 200 samples, this is much, much cleaner. But then there are little fireflies going on. And fireflies are basically single pixels which are completely blown out. They are, they are far too illuminated. And the denoiser will generally do a pretty good job of denoising that for any still images. But for, a, for an animation, when you have each frame after each other, where there's fireflies and the denoiser has tried to fix it, you'll end up with these strange artifacts going from frame to frame. So having no Fireflies is the ideal solution. So one thing people might tell me is you could just go to um, the clamping and set 10, for example, then try that again. And now we can see that that has solved the firefly issue. However, the bulb is way less interesting. The bulb is so boring, whereas a natural, an actual light bulb, you can't look at it because it's too bright. It is blowing out. So clamping, I never like to use clamping in ArcVis. I think I feel like I'd much prefer to try every other solution before that because it does ruin the renders. So if I set that off, we can see all the fireflies coming back. Now that is the issue which I've had and that is the issue which I want to solve. So one thing inside a blender which is very, very quick and very accurate with lighting and that is area lights. So if I, or point lights, or area lights, so this one here, Sorry, it's actually a point light. It was an area light and I've changed it to point. And that's just a simple point light. So let's render that and see how quick that is. And we can see that that cleans up incredibly fast. These point lights and area lights are the most efficient type of lights that you can have. If you have a very small mesh light that's emitting light into the scene, that's much less efficient and Blender will have a harder job at fixing that. So what I wanted to do was to create a solution where I can use 
a point light to illuminate the scene, but then have the filament light to light up the lamp and the bulb itself. So I did talk to people on Blender Artists and some people said to composite uh, two renders, one with just the glass having a nice effect and everything else being a holdout and render the scene without the glass and then merge the two. But I kind of felt like that was just a long way round when I feel like there could be a more simple solution. And I'd much prefer it all to be just be one render instead. And even that solution I did find to still have some sort of fireflies in it. And there's also other solutions, but this is the one which I've come to. If you do have your own solution, I'd love to hear about it. Um, but let me just talk about what I've done anyway. So what I want to do is I want to create a filament light, which only illuminates this area. So what I've done is I've created this node setup. So first of all, we have ray length. And that is saying if there is a ray which is further than 13 centimeters, then we can't see it. However, it does also then have secondary bounces. So we can see those secondary bounces. So if I plug that one into here, so I'm going to multiply that value by a thousand, which is the same as the strength and plug that into there. We can see that this part is being illuminated correctly, but then all the secondary bounces are still entering the scene. But I want to cut those off as well. So what we do have is ray depth. So if I plug that one into here, this is saying that if it's less than one bounce, or this is basically directly to the camera, all the other rays are cut off. If we have two bounces, that's uh, from the light source to the lamp to the camera, we can see those as well. If I set this to three, we can then see even more bounces. So this one to here, down to the, to the wall again, we can then see more and more bounces. So if I set that to 10, this is getting closer and closer to more realism. However, if I set that to two, that is now limiting it to from the light that's hitting from here, hitting the lamp. And I can multiply these two values together and the result is something that looks like this. So now we can see that this filament is only illuminating the lamp and this immediate area, which is exactly what I was looking for. I want this to only illuminate the bulb area so I can control that and then add an area light or a point light to actually illuminate the scene. However, we can't see the filament. So what I have added is this ray here. So if it is a singular ray, I'm gonna add that to this value. So plug that one into there. We can't see anything, but if I do add the glass, we can see now that we get the nice reflections inside the glass. Right then, so this is now illuminating the immediate area, which is great. This is exactly what I'm looking for. I can now get the nice reflections inside the glass, get the nice filament looking realistic. The actual lamp shade itself is gonna be illuminated by this filament, but the rest of the scene is gonna be completely noise free. There's gonna be absolutely no noise or fireflies being caused by this area. So what we can do is then add an area light on top of it. So if I turn on this area light, we can see that this is looking better. The whole scene is being illuminated, but we can see the bulb and we can now see the fireflies again. And that's because this point light is actually being reflected throughout this whole bulb, which is then casting noise back into the scene again, which is what we don't want. So using light linking, so this bulb filament and this glass is put inside of this light collection. So with this point light, which is also very small, it's about 1.5 centimeters in size and only two watts, if I go back to this here and go to light linking, click new, I can then choose that light here. And that basically tells it that I don't want this point light to be affecting this bulb in any way. So now we can see we are completely noise free. So this to me is absolutely perfect. I can get the best of both worlds. So now if I was to do a comparison, let's let's set the maximum samples to 64. And, and then I'm gonna do a, a comparison. So what we've got here, this one is the version which I've modified with the special node setup. And then if I go to this version, this one is without the point light and also just the pure emission coming out of the filament. And we can see in these dark areas how much cleaner this is. And this is after the same amount of samples. Now, what I did find is that if I go back to the, the noisier version and set that to 256, that is actually a roughly about the same noise level as this one. So let me try that. Okay, so this is this one has now rendered at 256 samples. We can still see there's a bunch of fireflies, but the general noise level compared to the cleaner version is roughly the same. So we can see roughly the same amount of noise. However, in this one, it still has these unusable uh, fireflies, which is which will be a huge problem. And this, I can keep pushing the samples, pushing the samples, and they'll still be there. 
So for a still image, that's probably going to be fine. But for an animation, you're going to have quite a lot of problems. So this solution, I think, is probably one of the better ones. But you're probably noticing that we are losing some uh, nice effect created by this filament. And that's actually quite simple to create. So if I go back to the, the modified version and then turn back on the bulb, and then for the point light, all I need to do is create a few of them. So this is basically simulating like three lights which are coming out from these various loops. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do Alt D Z and bring these down. And then I go to render preview. And then I can also reduce this to be 0.05. Oh, sorry, 0 0.005. We can then start to see some really cool effects coming back here, just like this original version. It is a bit too bright though, so I could maybe do to value of one. And we can also then move these up and down to tweak to tweak the heights. And we can basically, if you fine tune this, you could probably get very, very close to this original version. So this is already very quickly just getting quite close to that. And that again, if I was to render that, Right then, so this is the finished version. I actually accidentally rendered it again at 256, but we can see here if I compare the two, this is the unmodified version and this is the modified version. So the, the difference is, is amazing. So I do love this solution. I think that it's very simple and it works very well. I have tried it with a few different lights and it seems to work quite well. But having the control to be able to modify this area specifically will allow me to add different glare in the compositor and tweak this exactly how I want without having to worry anything about fireflies. This to me is, is a huge improvement over something like this and without having to do clamping or some strange other compositing, render layers and all this other thing, just straight out the box, just being able to render straight away something like this, I think is a huge improvement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this uh, little scene uh, for a free download from iMesh. I'll put the link in the description. You, you'll need to make an account, but just make an account. You'll be able to download it freely and then you can get these nodes. And then from that, you should be able to add that to any of your filaments and you can then tweak the distance in which the light rays actually go. So I've set it to 0.13, which is 13 centimeters away from the bulb. If you have a bigger lamp, you can increase that or decrease it and you should be able to adjust that how you wanted to. Now, I do think that this can be improved and there's probably a hundred other solutions in which you can achieve this. So I would love to hear everyone's solutions. And if you can modify this even further, that would be amazing. Because there was one problem which I did see in that when filament is lighting just the lamp itself, we can't actually see that light through the glass, uh, but that would be nice to include. I haven't figured that out. So if anyone can do that, that's great. But adding the point light afterwards illuminates the whole area anyway. So you can't really tell. It just looks like glass and it all looks fine to me. And so we did actually go from a a limitless render, which would take years to clean up, down to about 64 samples, which should be able to denoise quite well. Uh, you can then increase that if you wanted to for a better for a better render. But I would love to see what people think about this. Do write in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe because we are actually really super close to 30,000 subscribers. And also do check out iMesh because we do have 2,200 assets uh, for ArcViz. So if you're interested in that, do check that out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.